Ephesians 4.26 tells us, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. What is anger? At its core, anger is energy to solve a problem. That's what it is. It's not a sin, obviously, because that's what Paul says. He says, in your anger, do not sin. That means you can sin, but it means that anger itself is not. So anger is like the red warning light on the dashboard of your car. It signals you that there's a problem. But anger is secondary, which means that anger itself is coming from someplace. When the red warning light goes off on your car, you need to get under the hood and figure out where the problem is. So what are the major emotions that are underneath anger? There's three. There's hurt, there's fear, and there's frustration. So the next time you get angry, ask yourself, is something hurting me? Is something scaring me? or something frustrating me, and you're going to get to the root of your anger, and that's the problem that needs to be resolved. Focusing on the red light doesn't do you any good. You've got to get under the hood and figure out what the primary emotions are that are really causing your anger. But the question I get asked most often is, do some people have a reservoir of rage? Because they look like it. They're spilling over with their anger all the time. Anything can set them off, and they'll go into a rage, and it looks like they've just got this overabundance of rage inside of them. Well, here's the answer to that. No, there's no reservoir of rage. The people who are rageful all the time are people who have a problem with shame. I know it may not look like it, but ask yourself this. What would you rather feel? Embarrassed, humiliated, and ashamed of yourself, or mad? Exactly. People choose rage because they're trying to get away from their shame. So the hurt that they feel that's underneath their hood that they need to resolve is shame. So the best psychological advice I could give you for dealing with your anger is this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. That's right. It's from James 1. That's the best advice I could give you in dealing with your anger. Slow down. Because if anger is secondary, meaning there's something under the hood that you need to get to to resolve your anger, you've got to slow down when you get mad and try to figure out, am I hurt? Am I scared? Am I frustrated? And if I'm chronically angry... Do I have issues of shame that I need to deal with? Because if you want to deal with the anger in your life, you've got to take the advice of James. Slow down. Did you know that the emotional part of your brain is many times faster than the thinking part of your brain? That scientific fact led me to write my new book, Spiritual Wisdom for a Happier Life, How Your Eight Key Emotions Can Work for You. I'm very excited to let you know that Ravel is bringing that book here to the United States and publishing it in English because it has already been published in other languages and sold about 250,000 copies already. I believe that if you can harness the power of those eight key emotions, you're going to live a fuller and richer life and be able to be in a more complete way the person that God has created you to be.